This is the terrifying story of the titanic duel fought between the armies of Hitler and Stalin in the bitter cold of an Arctic winter outside Leningrad. It was here that the men of the German Army Group North fought and died with the men of the Red Army. The German forces were so constantly short of manpower and material that they christened the pitiless war they were fighting the Eternal War of the Poor Man. The Russians too had to endure terrible hardship and the siege of Leningrad contains heart-rending tales of suffering and heroism. But the Russian sacrifice was ultimately to be vindicated. For the men of Army Group North, there was to be no such satisfaction. Most were destined never to return to Germany. The ceaseless demands of the cruelest conflict in history would ultimately claim the whole Army Group as its victim. In late 1940, when Adolf Hitler finally confirmed to the General Staff that he had irrevocably decided to attack Russia, a plan was swiftly conceived by General Marx which envisaged a two-pronged advance by two huge army groups totaling over three and a half million men. The German grand strategy was for two great parallel advances, the first aimed at Leningrad in the north, then swinging south to Moscow, and the second at Odessa on the Black Sea. During the winter of 1939, Finland had been involved in an uneven struggle with Soviet Russia to protect her territory. Under the leadership of Field Marshal Mannerheim, the Finns had doggedly resisted the superior Russian forces, but ultimately had to yield valuable territory around Leningrad. Britain had refused to help the Finns, who in 1941 turned to Germany for aid in regaining their lost territory. Hitler hoped to draw Finland into an offensive war with Russia, but the Finnish objective was simply to redress the balance, not the conquest of Russia. Although the Finns would play a small part in the battle for Leningrad, their refusal to mount an invasion of Soviet territory would ultimately have dire consequences for Hitler. Under the Marx plan, elements of Army Group North were to capture Leningrad, then drive north to link up with the Finns and eliminate all Russian forces in the Baltic region. Only then was Moscow to be attacked from the west and north simultaneously. From the very outset, Hitler found it impossible to prioritize the objectives for his Russian campaign. After much discussion and argument, the Marx plan was subsequently revised to produce three separate army groups, each aimed at a different objective. Army Group North was to capture Leningrad, Army Group Center was to capture Moscow, and Army Group South was aimed at Odessa. With three major objectives to achieve, it was clear from the outset that German forces would be dangerously overstretched. Sections of the German military were very opposed to the venture, but Hitler refused to accept the advice of his staff officers. His gambler's instinct told him that if he delayed, even for one year, the crowds that cheered the latest successes so fervently might no longer be willing to follow him into so hazardous an undertaking, and there was surely no greater military adventure than the invasion of Russia. Following the spectacular victories in Poland, Norway, France and the Balkans, the German forces assembled for Barbarossa expected to fight a short campaign which would secure their victories throughout Europe. Hitler became convinced that he could crush the Red Army as easily as he had defeated his other enemies. In the spring of 1941, Field Marshal von Rundstedt 
who had spent most of the First World War on the Eastern Front, asked Hitler outright if he knew what it meant to invade Russia. The Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal von Brohich, and his Chief of the General Staff, General Halder, also counselled Hitler against the operation. It was all to no avail, as Hitler simply refused to heed their warnings. Field Marshal von Rundstedt, the commander of Army Group South, was forthright in his views on the forthcoming battle. This war with Russia is a nonsensical idea, to which I can see no happy ending. But if for political reasons the war is unavoidable, then we must face the fact that it cannot be won in a single summer campaign. Just look at the distances involved. We cannot possibly defeat the enemy and occupy the whole of Western Russia, from the Baltic to the Black Sea, within a few short months. We should prepare for a long war and go for our objectives step by step. First of all, a strong army group north should capture Leningrad and the area around it. This would enable us to link up with the Finns, eliminate the Red Fleet from the Baltic and increase our influence in Scandinavia. The central and southern army groups should, for the time being, advance only to a line running Odessa, Kiev, Orsha, Lake Ilmen. Then, if we have sufficient time this year, Army Group North could advance southeast from Leningrad towards Moscow, while Army Group Center move eastwards on the capital. All further operations should be postponed until 1942, when we should make new plans based on the situation as it then is. Had Hitler followed von Rundstedt's good advice, the history of the Western world may well have followed a very different pattern. Hitler, however, did have good grounds for rejecting the advice of his officers. While the German army in the 1930s had been building its strength under Hitler, Stalin had been destroying the Russian officer corps. By the end of the purge, the Russian army had lost three of the five remaining marshals of the Soviet Union, all 11 deputy ministers of defense, 75 of the 80 members of the military Soviet, all the commanders of the military districts, 13 of the 15 army commanders, more than half the corps commanders, and approximately 30% of the officers below brigade level. Stalin had considered himself safe, as he did not intend to become involved in Western affairs. He had made complex peace treaties and alliances with both Britain and Germany, and hoped they would fight a mutually destructive war in the West. Less than one year later, however, Stalin's hopes of a protracted war between the Western powers and Hitler evaporated with the brilliant success of Hitler's blitzkrieg tactics which saw Denmark, Norway, Holland, Belgium and France fall in rapid succession. The lightning campaign through the Balkans and Greece in 1941 could only produce more grounds for disquiet. Though Stalin accepted that war with Germany was now almost inevitable,